I'm Alex Michelson. This week, the issue is the 2022 race comes down to the wire. With us, California Attorney General Rob Bonta discuss his race for the second most powerful job in the Golden State. Plus, an issue is debate over Prop 30. Both sides here in studio to argue whether the state should tax millionaires to help fund electric vehicles. And why do California voters keep having to vote on dialysis? And what's the deal with Prop 29? The issue is starts right now. Broadcasting across California, you're watching The Issue Is. And welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. The Attorney General of California is one of the most powerful positions in the country. And the last few AGs have ended up in the cabinet as vice president and as governor. Rob Bonta was appointed to the role by Governor Gavin Newsom when the AG, Javier Becerra, joined the Biden administration. Before that, Bonta was a member of the state assembly. He is running against Republican Nathan Hockman. Hockman joined us recently here on The Issue Is. This week, Attorney General Rob Bonta is with us. Mr. Attorney General, welcome back to The Issue Is. Good to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for having me, Alex. Uh, you know, being an attorney is all about making a case. So real <laughs> succinctly, what is your case about why you deserve to stay in this job? Well, my superior experience for this role, my uh, priorities, which are in line and in sync with the people of California, and my effectiveness, in, in short. And uh, whether it be my vast experience working on state issues at the state level, or as an elected official for over a, a decade and a half, uh, working on all the issues that Californians hold dear, from public safety to housing to climate justice to health care to rights, uh, including the, the right to reproductive freedom and uh, the right to be free from gun violence, holding the powerful, um, including corporations and polluters accountable when they violate the law. That's what my record is full of. That's what I've been doing. That's what I've been fighting for. I see the role as being the people's attorney, uh, making your fights, people of California, my fight, standing by your side. You know, we had him on, of course, his take on experience is very different. Uh, he talked about what he sees as the biggest difference with you. Here's some of that. And I have 30 years of criminal justice experience as a federal prosecutor, a U.S. assistant attorney general and a defense attorney, and Rob Bonta had zero years. How do you respond to that? Well, let's talk about what he means and what he is specifically referring to when he says 30 years. He is a federal criminal tax uh, defense attorney. He is for hire paid uh, to, to profit uh, by alleged tax cheats who are seeking to get the lightest sentence possible. That's what he does. Uh, it's his job. It's what his experience that makes him most qualified for. Um, that does not make you qualified to be the California Attorney General. It's, again, it's not a federal job. It's a state job. He has no state experience. It's an elected office. He has no elected uh, office experience. Uh, we don't do criminal defense. We do criminal prosecution uh, and hold people accountable. I have 25 years of experience working in, on law enforcement issues and criminal justice issues, actually working with sheriffs and sheriff's departments and sheriff's deputies, police, police chiefs, police departments, uh, bu doing budgets. Of course, there's a there's there's a spin that my opponent likes to have. I think his um, peddling of misinformation and disinformation will, would make Donald Trump blush. Uh, they're from the same party, so there's no surprise there. Uh, but I think the facts speak volumes, and I just laid out the facts. Well, one of the things that he criticizes you for is your relationship with George Gascon. He says uh, that he would take a lot of steps to sort of remove cases away from George Gascon. He points to this tweet that you put out in 2020. We want to put it up on the screen. Here's what it said. During the 2020 race, you said, proud to support George Gascon for Los Angeles County District Attorney. He's a powerful and courageous reformer who will infuse our criminal justice system with more compassion, humanity, Humanity and safety. Were you right about that? Is George Gascon doing a good job? So at, at that time, I uh, joined the majority of the voters of Los Angeles in supporting George Gascon. And the promise that he presented as a candidate to uh, fight for safety and justice and, and fairness. And uh, there, there are many uh, district attorneys throughout the state of California. Um, I work with all of them. Uh, they all have different approaches and, and different uh, perspectives, and I do it my way as well. I have my own approach um, and my own um, uh, 
perspective and and style, and it's different than than everyone else's. But George Gascon is not just one DA. He is the DA of Los Angeles County, 10 million people. One out of four people in California live in Los Angeles County. Um, and there are some that say that his approach is too similar to your approach, and Hockman is saying that if you get him in there, he'll sort of be a check on George Gascon. What do you say to that criticism, that, that the two of you are, are linked and that, that philosophy is the same? That I think the facts are what, what you need to look at, and the facts don't bear that out. Uh, I would seek enhancements. I've said that time and time again, including enhancements on hate crimes, which are hard to prove, but when they're proven, um, the enhancement should be on the table and uh, should be sought under the appropriate circumstances. So it's a it's a very clumsy attempt uh, to make the race about something that this is not about. I am the California Attorney General. There is no one who leads and approaches criminal justice like me. Even though there's an attempt to create a guilt by association, uh, it falls flat. The facts don't justify it. I, I approach uh, my work in my own individualized and unique way. Um you have not done a TV debate with him. We've offered to host one here. I know other stations have offered to host one as well. I know you did a uh, Zoom forum with the Sacramento um, Bee. Why not do a TV debate with him? And, and isn't it good for democracy for both people to see you debate each other? I think debates are good for democracy. We've done two debates in this race, one in the primary. Um, on uh, on video, still available, uh, available on TV in real time, uh, where questions were posed to all of the candidates and rebuttals were provided as well, provided real opportunity for robust debate, um, presented the stark contrast of the different candidates, and then we did it again in the general. Let's talk about one of those issues, which I know you're really passionate about, um, which is the growing crisis of fentanyl. Uh, we have seen overdoses that are killing far too many Californians. In the simplest terms, what is your plan? We've been at work on this issue uh, for months um, and during my entire time in as attorney general. I asked for and got uh, a fentanyl task force, 25 new positions. $8 million in year one, $7 million approximately in year two to take on the fentanyl crisis, to go after the manufacturers who are manufacturing fentanyl, the distributors that are bringing it into California and moving it around uh, California. Um, and, you know, we have been taking making arrests as well, um, multiple arrests, over 200. Uh, we've seized over 1,000 pounds of fentanyl, take, taken 4 million pills off the streets. Uh, every one of those pills represents someone who could be hurt or harmed or even um, killed. And so we're saving lives, we're taking on fent fentanyl, we're using our resources and prioritizing and moving the needle and making a difference every day. Another issue you're dealing with, that racist conversation between LA City Council members. Uh, you're looking at whether there were any laws broken, you've launched a formal investigation. What's the latest on that front? We launched an investigation over two weeks ago now. Uh, we, we moved swiftly and decisively uh, with a commitment to uncover the truth, to go wherever the facts and law take us. Uh, we launched an investigation. We sent notices to preserve evidence to the city of LA, to uh, the Los Angeles Labor Federation, uh, so that all of the uh, materials and relevant information uh, is available to us as we uh, pursue justice and fairness here and make sure that uh, no laws were broken and no rights were violated. So, so far you don't know. Uh, I mean, it's the early stages of it, I would imagine. Um, it's early stages, yes. Yeah. It's, a, it's an ongoing, um, you know, deep, sophisticated investigation where we're going to uh, have to be comprehensive and thorough and um, accurate, and that's going to take some time. Um, all right. And we end with something fun, because we always like to have a little fun on this show. For people who may not know you, you were the captain of the soccer team at Yale. And every year there's this big bipartisan soccer game between legislators from Northern California and Southern California. Here you are, Bonta with the goal, dominated this game with two goals, the Sacramento Bee posting this video of this. What was this event like for you? It was a lot of fun and it was a success because I didn't pull a hammy, Alex, that, that's my goal, <laughs> uh, to get out injury free. Uh, so I, I escaped with a lot of fun, uh, no injuries. A lot of great time with my uh, recently former colleagues in the legislature and all for a good cause to, to raise um, money for charity. 
uh, to do something I love. I, I grew up playing soccer. It opened up doors for me. It allowed me to see the world. It introduced me to people and experiences I never would have had. It's been a gift to me that keeps giving. And this is just another example of that. Well, Miguel Santiago, uh, the assemblyman, said the only way for his team to win was to take out Bonta. And they weren't <laughs> able to do that. Uh, so you were able to win that, uh, that. So congratulations on that. Up next, we've got a debate on Prop 30. But we go to break with music. And the last time you were on, Mr. Attorney General, you said your favorite artist was Lupe Fiasco. Thank you. <laughs> Support Prop 30. Prevent fires, cut emissions, and cleaner air. Fellow Californians, I need to warn you about Proposition 30. You've likely seen plenty of ads on TV about Proposition 30. You may have been confused by what it actually is. Prop 30 would impose a 1.75% income tax on those making over $2 million a year, which is about 30,000 Californians. That tax will expect to raise three to five billion dollars annually to fund zero emission car programs and wildfire prevention efforts. Prop 30 is overwhelmingly supported financially by the ride-sharing company Lyft, but it's also backed by the California Democratic Party and Mayor Eric Garcetti of Los Angeles, Mayor Breed of San Francisco, Garcia of Long Beach, Schaff of uh, Oakland, and Licardo of San Jose. So who opposes it? Governor Gavin Newsom, California Teachers Association, and the California Republican Party, to name a few. Prop 30 is the subject of our Issue Is debate this week. Eli Lippman is the executive director of Move LA. They are one of the first organizations to conceive of and draft Prop 30 back in 2020. Matt Rodriguez is the campaign manager for the No on 30 campaign. Welcome both. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks. Eli, let's yeah, start with you. What is the affirmative case for Prop 30? Why should people pass this? Yeah, you know, we've got a dire climate and air pollution crisis, extreme heat. We've got runaway wildfires, and Californians are dying at higher rates on cancer, on asthma, and heart disease. So we sat down, us, our organization, Move LA, my colleague Denny Zane, to write this measure. It was a group of grassroots organizations representing public health, representing uh, environmental justice, environmental groups, and we said, how do we solve this problem? We need a sustainable, long-term source of funding to address runaway fires, toxic emissions from transportation like ships, locomotives, and heavy-duty trucks. And that's how we came up with this measure. Over, over two years ago. And funding electric vehicles in a big way as well. 100%, yes. Funding electric vehicles for regular Californians, particularly low and middle income at Californians, so that they can actually afford them. Some subsidies for them. Matt, why is that a bad idea? Uh, it's not a question it's a bad idea. It's a question of who benefits from it. And ultimately, uh, this measure is really in service of one company, the rideshare company Lyft. They've bankrolled $49 million so far between funds to the campaign and to the Democratic Party. Uh, it's basically 98% of funding. Basically, all funding has come from Lyft. Publicly traded billion-dollar corporations don't give money if they're not going to get something for it. And ultimately, uh, uh, Lyft has pledged to transition their vehicles to electric vehicles by 2030. They're going to transition those vehicles regardless. The question is, who's going to pay for it? Is the California taxpayer going to pay for it? Are California utility payers going to pay for that? Or are they going to pay for that? Our argument is, Gavin Newsom's argument is, a large, very large coalition argument is, that's their responsibility. And if they want to, they can do that. Although Lyft is funding this, mm -hmm. um, it's not just Lyft that's backing this, though. I mean, we, we mm -hmm. want to put up on the screen a list of the coalition mm -hmm. that's backing. This includes organizations like the American Lung Association, sure. the National Resource Defense Council, California Environmental Voters. Mm -hmm. Are they all doing this just to benefit Lyft? Well, I think what you have to look at is uh, those organizations, look, Everyone wants clean air, and we would like to transition electric vehicles. You know who wants to? Gavin Newsom. They put in $54 billion recently in the legislative uh, process, $10 billion going towards electric vehicles. The difference is he had to do that looking at the entire state of California. So he was looking at utilities, counties and cities, public safety, the grid. None of that was done by Lyft. This was just done 100% by Lyft and funded 100% by Lyft to benefit them. We just want to come back to the uh, argument. Lyft is not doing this out of the goodness of their heart. They're doing this to fund uh, their own transition. They should do that themselves. We should not be in the business of going to the ballot every two years for corporations to uh, write tax policy that helps themselves. That's a very, very bad precedent. Eli, so your I, thoughts on that? Yeah, I have to push back on it. The claim that Lyft wrote it is categorically false, uh, and numerous jur journalists have actually fact-checked that. Um, do you know uh, how much money Prop 30 earmarks for Lyft? 
it zero, zero dollars for Lyft. Zero dollars. But it does help the drivers of Lyft as right. well, and right? Right, and the text doesn't mention Lyft or any company by name in the measure. And I should know that. I wrote the text. I wrote the fine print. So show me the text where, you know, show me, Matt, you know, where is that text that says it's for Lyft? I, I, can I, can I Yeah, go that? ahead. If you look on page 15, look, of, of course Lyft was not going to write in there, hey, we're writing a tax increase for Lyft. First of all, uh, Lyft has been researching this around the state for two years. I know that because I'm a political operative. I've known Lyft has been looking for this for years, number one. Number two, they have lobbied the state legislature now for three years trying to get taxpayer subsidies. They opposed the original bill that put the mandate for them to move to 90% renewables by 2030. They lost. You know what happened after that? It went to the California Air Resources Board. You know what Lyft did there? They lobbied them for taxpayer subsidies. They lost. Now they're at the ballot with $50 million worth of taxpayer of right, trying to get I mean, you worked for them two years ago, and so I did you know, work with them two years ago. But I also that was a set completely separate issue, and what I was working with them on was different than them trying to get a taxpayer bailout, which is what this is. But let, let me ask about the, the broader yeah. question, though, about whether this is what we should be doing. Californians, wealthy Californians, already pay the highest marginal tax rate in the entire country. Right. We have a hundred billion dollar surplus. Is it really necessary for them to pay more in taxes? We can't find this money in that $100 billion? Yeah, 100%. And we would say, you know, billionaires are opposing this. We have 30 billionaires who are opposing this measure. That's whose opposition is, is paying, uh, paying for the opposition. And they're, they don't want to raise their taxes, obviously. But what we're saying is that we think that they should pay their fair share so that regular Californians, low-income, middle-class Californians, can get a rebate so that they can purchase a, a, a a vehicle. You know, these billionaires can probably afford dozens of electric vehicles. Us regular Californians, we can't afford any of them. And, you know, the thing that gets lost in this debate is there's $80 billion for the electrification of our transportation system, right? Our zero emission vehicles. $40 billion of that is going to go directly into an equity fund. That means that only low income Californians and those in disadvantaged communities can access those funds. So to say that this is some big corporate handout is just categorically false. I respond to that. Then why is Lyft funding the entire measure? But number two, uh, you know how much money is put into the grid for this? Zero dollars. Do you know how much money they're putting into wildfires? They talk about wildfires the whole time. 20%. Do you know how much money Lyft... $20 billion. You know, That's you, more money but, than the legislature has done this year or any other year. Let, but you didn't know that a year ago because they, Lyft was already on the, on the street looking for signatures. So let, 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 me, let me go no, through... No, we were the ones me, looking for signatures me, a year ago. Uh, well, Lyft paid $15 million for them, so obviously Lyft was involved. No, but let me just go through this. Do you know how much... There was a $100 billion surplus, you're right, this year. We are in an inflationary period of highest prices in over 40 years. People are struggling to put food on the table. Let me tell, tell you how much... Yeah. you know how much money Lyft spent and this entire coalition? spent lobbying the legislature for adu uh, additional money for wildfires zero for how much for grid upgrades zero for how much for extra for electric vehicles zero they were always going to the ballot and you want to know why this, because yeah. they but need you know this what? money at the air resources is, board for their transition to electric but this vehicles isn't yes. about this isn't about them it's about uh, it's about the billionaires club it's about these 30 billionaires a record in california by the way mm -hmm. that are funding the opposition to this measure because they simply don't uh, want to pay their fair share and why do you can think I, why do you let me let me ask you this yeah. question though yeah. 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 why do you think most of the most beloved Democratic figures in this state, with the exception of the governor, yeah. are behind this. Well, I, let, me, let me answer a couple. First of all, I would argue with the premise of that question. So, number one, uh, he talks about billionaires. Uh, when I was a kid, my mother used to say, don't tell me half truths. Uh, this campaign sort of lives on quarter truths, with all due respect to my friend Eli. <laughs> so uh, a couple of things. First of all, did he tell you this? There's actually two no campaigns opened up. You know who's one of them? We have one, the California Teachers Association, the California Federation of Teachers. You want to talk about progressive groups? Uh, it isn't just Gavin Newsom. You know who else it is? The NAACP, California Teachers Association, the Federation of Teachers, California League of Latin American Citizens. So we have a bipartisan coalition. So the idea that they've got all of the, they do not have all of the legislators. So some of this is just not true. And at the end of the day, the question is, who do you trust? Lyft, which is funding the entire measure, or Governor Gavin Newsom on climate? Voters have to make that decision. And last word to you, maybe 15, 20 seconds. Yeah, we think that this is an opportunity for voters to say yes on Proposition 30 because we need to spend a generation to working with $100 billion to clean our economy to ensure that every Californian can afford uh, these, these new vehicles, these new trucks, these new uh, locomotives, these new cars, so that, that we can have the clean economy that we want, the clean air that we've all uh, desire and need okay. in, this Cal in California. Thank you both for sharing your perspective. Ultimately, it's up to the voters. We'll see. Polls show this thing could go either way. We'll see. Uh,
Let's, when we come back, uh, we are going to be talking about Prop 29. Uh, but we thank them both for being here. You're watching The Issue Is. Thank you very much. Great. Nicely done. Great. Thank you for being civil and, and doing a good job with that. That was nice, right? Everybody got their, their take in? Thank you. Here's why doctors, nurses, and patients urge you to vote no on Prop 29. You've likely seen ads for Prop 29 more than just about any other ad. So what is this really about? For the third election in a row, Californians are being asked to vote on issues concerning the multi-million dollar dialysis industry. It's been a long-standing fight between medical unions and those who run those dialysis clinics. Prop 29 would require a doctor, nurse practitioner, or physician's assistant to be on location for dialysis clinics. Right now, they're not. Those unions say this would make those clinics safer. The clinics say they're unnecessary and would make the procedure more expensive, forcing life-saving clinics to close. Every single major editorial board in the state is urging you to vote no on Prop 29. And a series of polls show it is likely going down in defeat. But ultimately, your vote is what will determine its fate. Final word about that when we come back. But first, we go to break with the Above Los Angeles Instagram page taking us above Rancho Palos Verdes. Stay with us. You should have already received a mail-in ballot, but if not, you can still vote in person. For more info, go to vote.ca.gov. As we end this week, we want to wish you a happy Halloween. A special shout out to artist Arthur Romeo, who made this pumpkin of my head. Hopefully it doesn't scare the children. Nicely done, Arthur. He's a master carver. And thanks to our lighting director, Perry Soon, for lighting it up. Have fun trick-or-treating. We'll see you next week for our final show before the election. And happy Halloween.